everybody, welcome to The Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is gonna be a homeschool show and tell. The homeschool show and tell is an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted and Rest and myself. Our goal with the homeschool show and tell was really just to show that there's not one right way to homeschool. And we do that by bringing homeschoolers together from around the world to show their take on a specific topic. And this month's topic is gonna to be such a good one and I'm so excited to watch the other videos in this playlist because it's all about how to balance all of the things as a homeschool mom. I don't know about you, but homeschooling, being a mom, keeping the house going, it always feels like a juggling act. And I'm not very good at juggling. So today I am going to share with you how I do it all and my top five tips for getting more done. Now, first of all, how I do it all is I don't do it all. And anybody who tells you otherwise is lying to you. And I will stand on my soapbox and say that all day long. There is no way any one person is doing all of the things all of the time. It is just impossible. But like I said, I have five tips for how I manage to get as much done as possible. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today. Tip number one is somebody actually told me this when Emily was really, really young. And they said that motherhood in general, and that's before I even started homeschooling, is quite literally, like we just said, a juggling act. And they said that the key to being successful was never dropping the same ball two days in a row. So maybe this ball is homeschooling, maybe this ball is, you know, keeping a clean house, maybe this ball is making healthy meals. So maybe today when we're juggling, we, do not cook from scratch because we don't have time. And we're really good at homeschooling and we keep a pretty decent house. So maybe tomorrow we don't drop that homemade or healthy meal ball. Instead, maybe our house slides a little bit, right? And we're constantly juggling, trying not to drop the same ball twice. And I have really tried to kind of embrace that and live with that motto as much as possible. So I allow myself grace to not be good at all the things all the time. If we get no homeschooling done today, okay, that's stuck, but oh well, maybe my house is clean, maybe my laundry's done, maybe I got some work done, uh, maybe I made healthy meals, whatever it was, I don't like stew on it and really sit with the fact that, oh, I failed. Instead, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I didn't get homeschooling done today, but tomorrow that's the thing I'm gonna make a priority, right? And so that's the ball I don't drop tomorrow. So while it's not perfect, that is kind of my number one tip. Give yourself grace for the things you don't get done today and then try to make them a priority tomorrow so you're not dropping the same ball two days in a row. Tip number two is going to sound counterproductive. And a few years ago, I even would have fought to the death to tell you that this was a silly tip and no way was it worth being on this list, but I'm a huge proponent of it now. So we're just gonna throw it on here. So tip number two is to prioritize yourself. I know, like I said, I spent years being the martyr and not taking care of myself and losing myself because there was not enough time but then I've spent the last two years making myself a priority. And so I know both sides of it and I've seen both sides of it and taking the time for me, making me a priority, making me number one. And the first thing that I do every day is like filling my cup and watching it spill over into every other part of my life, which means I'm a better mom. I'm a better teacher. I'm a better wife. I have more energy to put in to homeschool and homemaking and all of the other things that I need to get done. It literally felt like taking that one hour and spending it on me added more hours to the rest of the day because of the endorphins and the energy and everything else. So find something, anything to fill your cup first because the old adage really is true. You can't pour from an empty cup. You really should put your own oxygen mask on first. I am not preaching at you because I spent years not doing this, but I swear if you do it, it will be worth it and you will see the fruits of that labor. So if you can make time, do it. No matter how small the habit or the task, or no matter how many minutes it is, even if it's only five, like find, something to fill your cup, find something for you and prioritize yourself first and foremost, and then watch that you know, liquid run over and like into the other parts of your life 
you will seriously be amazed at how much more you can get done when you're not running on fumes. Tip number three is to prepare. As many things as you can prepare ahead of time, do it. So my saving sanity for our homeschool is typically on Sundays, I take a few hours to kind of pre-plan what I would like our homeschool week to look like, pre-plan our dinner menu for the week, prep as many breakfast and lunch things as I can. So I meal prep lunch at minimum for me and Emily for the entire school week so that I don't even have to think about it when it's lunchtime. If you want more details about that, I will link a video up here that I just recently did. Um, but as many things as you can, whatever it is, maybe you're like me and you want to work out every morning. So before I go to bed at night, I lay out my workout clothes so I don't have to think about it in the morning. Like I said, I prep for our homeschool. I prep for our meals as many things as possible. Like the night before I go to bed, I lay our homeschool stuff out on the table. Like present me is never not thankful for the things that past me thought and prepared ahead of time. So if you want tips on balancing it, that is probably one of the biggest is prepare whatever you can ahead of time. Like as little as the task is in the moment, it will be twice as impactful later when you aren't having to do it then. Tip number four is to have a routine, a rhythm, or a flow, but not a schedule. Schedules are strict. They're hard to adhere to. If you wake up late, you're automatically behind and you're stressing and you feel like you're behind. But if you have a rhythm, a routine, or a flow, it doesn't matter if you wake up at 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. or even noon, your day can still kind of flow through the way that you want it to flow through. So we don't have a schedule. We don't have times. We just have like a rhythm that our day follows. So like I get up, I make breakfast for everybody or lay breakfast out because it's not super difficult. I go out to the gym. Emily wakes up whenever she's ready. She knows that there's a few independent things she needs to do while I'm in the gym. I come back, get in my shower. And none of these things are time, time consistent. Like it doesn't matter whether it's 10 a.m. or noon. She knows what's coming next because we have a rhythm. So she knows what to expect. I know what to expect. We never feel like we're behind. We're never stressed. We're never waiting for like what's next or wondering. Like we just have a somewhat of a flow. Now, does it mean we do the same thing every day? Absolutely not. But there is like a flow to our day. Like we know that this is probably when we're going to eat and then we're going to do this together or something together. Um, it also means that if for some reason our schedule does change, like let's say today we had a doctor's appointment, but it was canceled. It's not like a waste of day, right? We have a rhythm or a routine or a flow that we go through pretty much every day so we can just revert back to it. Like it's not like, oh, that was canceled. Now what do we do with ourselves? We just revert back to our normal, natural, everyday rhythm and then we can still get that stuff done. It doesn't feel like it was a waste and I'm not scrambling to try to come up with like, what do I do or planning or like, you know, trying to fill that time elsewhere. And tip number five is to delegate. You can only do so many things. You are only one person. There are only so many hours in the day, no matter how much we wish there were more, there just aren't. So if your kid comes to you and they're like, I really want to learn another language, like for example, Spanish, Latin, Japanese, whatever. And you're thinking to yourself, number one, I don't know that language. Number two, I don't have time to learn it and then teach it. And number three, my brain just can't handle it. Delegate it. Find like in this day and age, there's Duolingo that's an app. There's teachers on out school. There are so many different ways that you can delegate something to somebody else. For example, Kevin teaches one day a week, and honestly, I don't even care what he teaches. Right now it's STEM, that's what they love, but he teaches one day a week so that I have that day free to do other things. Like that is typically my work day. That's when I sit down and get as much work done as possible. And I delegate that day to him because I need it to do other things because there are only so many hours in the day and I can't do all the things otherwise. And that's why I'm able to do as much work as I'm able to do because he teaches one day a week. Um, we delegate Emily's book club once a month to my wonderful friend, Mary Hannah Wilson, because I don't have time to, you know, do a book club or host a book club or organize one. So she does that for me. We delegate archery to 4-H for the most part. We do it as a family, but that's something that she does with an outside place. She does karate somewhere else. 
Um, there are a lot of times that Kevin and I trade off on dinner or we eat dinner out because I'm delegating that chore to somebody else because I'm out of time and hours in the day. So it is okay not to do it all. It's okay to delegate things to other people or even to your child themselves, like delegate chores to them, delegate some independent work to them. Like if your kids are old enough, have them do some things on their own. So it's less on you. The more you can get off your plate, the more time you have to do whatever is still left on your plate or even prioritize yourself. So those are my top five tips for how to do more as a homeschool mom. I don't know if I'm going to say it's how to do it all because like I said, nobody is doing it all. So keep that in mind just because you're seeing another mom who's cooking from scratch or, you know, has a farm in her backyard. That's fantastic. But I'm sure you're doing something that she's not doing. So just keep in mind that we all have our priorities. We're all just doing the best we can. These are just tips for how I get more in as a full-time working homeschool mom. Nobody's perfect though. None of us are getting it all done. But I would love to hear your tips because I'm always looking for ways to revolutionize or get more done because our hours are limited. So if you have some sort of time management tip or trick, I would love to hear it. So leave it down in the comments and don't forget to check out the link in the description for the playlist to see even more tips, tricks, and talks on how to balance it all as a homeschool mom.